What's up, God? Let's do a quick twin flame reading. Um, for the those of us on twin flame journeys to master and become one with the masculine and feminine energies of ourselves, the dualities of ourselves, so that we can be in alignment with who were we created to be at our highest potential. Um, you know, I don't focus on the relationship aspect of the twin flame journey. However, if the cards, the cards gives us the message that they give us. So spirit gives us the message that we need to hear. So I don't exclude that from my readings as well. But I read from the perspective of becoming one with your masculine and feminine energies. Thank you for all of your likes, subscribes, and comments. Before I begin, I, before I begin, I just ask that you please like, subscribe, comment, share, whatever it is you can do. If you resonate with my readings before, um, to help me grow my channel and to help me connect with many spirits and souls as possible that would like to become one with themselves. Okay, so you're not supposed to touch essential oils, uh, but it ain't, it's not a lot of it, so I just like to put the essential oil on where I'm going to lay the cards because it's just what I do. It, it gives me balance. It gives me uh, serenity. I need it. I've been definitely in turmoil for the past few days, so... We're going to start with an oracle message with the Moonology Oracle card. I miss these. I hope you guys, oh, I hope you guys have been doing well. So quickly, so according to the Kabbalistic astrology, we're still in Libra season. Because I'm like, well, Spirit, you said Libra season brings blessings, even though I have been blessed. I'm not going to lie, with the beautiful home or whatever that was out the blue. But, you know, I expected so much more but according to the kabbalistic astrology calendar we're still in libra season now i'm trying to find an actual kabbalistic um astrology calendar and i have to keep looking i'm gonna have to look uh, i'm sure it's there somewhere but the gregorian calendar we're in scorpio season but i study Kabbalah and I you know as it pertains to astrology I, I like the Kabbalistic viewpoint I like the Toth messages I like the tree of life my ancestors guided me to Kabbalah and Kabbalah guided me to tarot so I like to use the Kabbalistic messages so we're gonna go with the Kabbalistic um calendar for now and according to that we're still in Libra season sorry Scorpios <laughs> but in the Gregorian calendar we're in Scorpio season but we're at the end of Libra season on a Kabbalistic calendar as well. So, new moon in Pisces. Meditate and contemplate. So what are we meditating on? We're meditating on a personal issue reaching its resolution. So if you're going through something right now, if you're having a hard time, and I'm not excluded, I'm not excluded from this because I've been having a very hard time. Spirit is saying that meditate and contemplate in order to reach this personal resolution get ourselves in a place of mental tranquility and peace and meditate on what we would like to happen so tonight if you have a homework assignment if i can give you one and for myself we're going to write down exactly what we need to bring resolution to our lives right now whether it be short-term resolution or long-term resolution but to bring us to a solid and stable and secure foundation we're going to write down what we need financially what we need in our career what we need in our lives what we need in our love what we need in our relationships what we need in our life to bring us to a place of stability structure peace that we can build upon to enter the next level what do we need to be secure so that our stability don't get in the way of our purpose according to maslow's hierarchy of needs the bottom of it the bottom of our needs is safety is security and when we aren't secure in our living situations we aren't secure in sorry i'm looking it up maslow's hierarchy of needs so i can make sure i'm getting it right um, we, when we aren't secure in our physiological needs, sometimes that can get us out of a place of peace, uh, get us out of a meditative state that we need to be in when we're manifesting. So it's good to have a st stability in our lives. So what we're going to do is write down what we need 
so that we are safe. So the bottom is physiological needs, which is air, food, water, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction. So it's like the food in your stomach, the, you know, water, things to keep you in good health, shelter, sleep, clothing. Um, they have reproduction on the bottom as well, which is our ability to produce fruit. And we can use that, we can keep that open, our ability to produce. Um, so anyway, safety of our kids as well. But we have safety, personal security, employment, resources, health, and property as the next level. Then we have love and belonging at the next level. Then we have esteem and we have self-actualization. So when we're at the bottom still trying to get food, water, shelter, sleep, clothing, um, when, we're when we're stuck at the bottom, we can't evolve to self-actualization because we're still trying to provide the lowest level of needs, which is food, which is water, which is shelter. And that's fucking bullshit. That is not the life that we're supposed to live, especially when we're on this twin flame journeys. I was just having a talk with God about my journey. It's like, I should not be suffering at all. I should not have to depend on other people to provide me with anything. I should be stable. And, you know, I'm, I'm not blaming the journey. I'm to blame for a little bit as well. But I shouldn't have to suffer or, or rely on someone else to, for a handout. You know, I should, I sacrifice my life for more life. And I, I need that more life that I was promised. So, but what can block that from manifesting is being in a state of eagerness and desperation and lack and in turmoil because my physiological needs are acting as distractions and blockages. It's almost like the opposition working on behalf, using those to keep me from manifesting self actualization So right now, tonight, we can work on those personal issues, reaching resolution by meditating and contemplating on the things that we need so that our safety, physiological, our esteem, um, our lower level needs are met so that our higher level needs are also met. Loving, belonging, and things of that sort. Friendship, intimacy, family, sense of connection. Like we need those to be met so that we can get esteem respect, self-esteem, status, recognition, strength, and freedom, and so that we can self-actualize, desire to become the most that one can be. That's what the Twin Flame journey is all about, becoming the most that you can be. But how can we get there if we're fighting for water, if we're fighting for electricity, if we're fighting for food, if we're fighting for shelter, if we're fighting for transportation, if we're fighting for property, if we're fighting for kids, whatever. We can't get there if we're still fighting for our lower level needs. So we can't allow we can't allow that to be blockages. So let's meditate on our personal issues being reached. A personal issue reaching resolution in our lives. And we need it to happen now. We're not meditating for the future. This shit needs to happen the fuck now. I'm ready to get the fuck ASAP in my Tokyo Tony place. <laughs> I got that from Tokyo Tony. All right, so what do we have here? Um, sorry, guys. Like, all of these are trying to come. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, as you can see, like, all of these are coming. This is coming. Um, goodness gracious. Six of Swords on the bottom of the deck and King of Coins on the bottom of the deck as well. The fountain right under the king of coins and the queen of coins right under the six of swords. So um, but let's close this out. So we're going to take the king of coins and we're going to have the fountain on the bottom of the deck um, because I always like to take the bottom one as well. The fountain represents infinity. It represents the universe. It represents God. It represents... Um, it's from the Fountain Tarot deck, but it represents all that is life. It represents God, and I'm going to read some of it for some reason. It's an infinity sign by the Fountain. Oh, there it goes. It says B. The fountain exists outside and beyond the cycles of birth, death, time, and form. It is nameless, changeless source of which everything is a part. It is the waking from the dream of separateness 
and identity and the recognitions of one's self is not only connected to all things, but all things divine nature. So this is about, uh, this is exactly what is the Twin Flame journey is about. Self-actualization, realizing that we are, we are one with the universe, we're one with God. We are vessels of God on earth. Recognizing what that means and the power that it entails. I don't even know the full power that that entails. I've, I've gotten past the first step of knowing that I am God and God is in me, a vessel of God on earth. But the next step is, what does that mean? What do I need to do with this power? How do I access this power? How do I access the power? I know the twin flame journey, becoming one with your masculine and feminine energies. I I've been doing I've done a lot of things. I freed a soul yesterday, a, a spirit that was um stuck in the house that I'm about to move to. I freed you know, I can do stuff like that. You know, before that I was in my sleep and fighting demons. Before that I'm communicating with ancestors who have passed away they're teaching me in my dreams and about my journey and my grandmother and all these people that are not blood related but family coming to me and teaching me lessons and dreams and you know nipsey came to me in a dream told me to be even louder you know and that's just not for me that's for us all and a lot of people who are alive celebrities and not celebrities come to me in dreams teach me about who i am drake told me that i am in a dream a remnant or what appeared to be Drake, but Drake's spirit or something. That I'm a remnant of the children of Israel. And there was a lot of other things in that dream that I don't want to put on Facebook. Um, because it was, because I don't want to offend anyone. But that I wouldn't receive help from a certain group of people. Because I'm a remnant of, a, of the children of Israel. So anyway, and then I had a dream when, what's her name, Jordan Woods, brought me to the the Lion of Judah. But anyway, it's, just, it's like astral projection. It's like we're all together in spirit. In the physical realm, we're not, we're separated. But in spirit realm, we're all one because we're all one with the same source. So it's like recognizing that power you have to become one with source and being able to use it. I said a lot there. But meditating and contemplating on Entering this new phase of life and fighting for it, not allowing your circumstances to get in the way. And this is back to the reading. I'm sorry, guys. I went off on a tangent here. But to get back to the reading, meditating and contemplating on personal issues being reached, fighting for what we believe in, fighting for this next phase of life, not, in let, not letting things bother us to a point where it's blocking our manifestation. It's blocking this new phase of more button of life that's awaiting us. So it's like you're, we're in a fight right now. We're in a fight whether we recognize it or not. We're in a fight for security. We're in a fight for stability. We're in a fight to get out of this lower level of living and enter a higher level of living, a higher level of existence so that we can be secure in who we are and what we have in our lives. We're not fighting for our low level needs because we have to pour into others who are also fighting. So I'm feeling depleted and I've been feeling depleted because I'm still fighting for needs that should be already met. And I'm like, okay, you know, I sacrificed my life and, you know, the scripture says, follow me, sacrifice, and I'll make you a fisher of men or, and when you sacrifice your life, you'll get more life. I think it's John 10, 10 or something like that. Come to me so that you may have life and have it in abundance. So it's like not allowing the enemy to steal that life that is available to you. Becoming secure, becoming stable, solid in who you are, solid in what you were created to be. Solid in life. A solid foundation in all aspects of your life. In relationships, in emotions, in spirit. Like my spiritual powers are increasing. But physically, in a physical realm, I'm struggling. And it's like, why? I mean, I know I have a beautiful home and I'm really blessed for it. And I'm not being ungrateful. But it's like having a beautiful home, one of the best homes in the neighborhood, but I don't own it. So the, I didn't enter this journey to still be under someone else's tutelage. When you live in someone else's property, you steer under their rules. I didn't enter this journey to, journey to be under nobody else's rules. So I should own my own home. I should own my own. These are lower level things that I should own. Property is lower level. It's one of the, the bottom is physiological and the next one is um, safety and property is under that. 
So it's like, um, anyway, being more abundant and stable and secure financially as a person in your life and period and, and who you are as a person. It's like a solid foundation. These are the things. This is 10 of coins and this is the king of coins. Like this is what we are fighting for right now. That's why we had to meditate and contemplate so that we can reach this personal resolution of new life so that we can enter this life that was so promised to those of us on twin flame journeys like you're not gonna promise me something and then four years later i mean i'm not new to this i've been on this journey for four years it didn't have a name i didn't know what i was doing i didn't have a twin flame journey name until later on maybe like two years but it's like i've been on it you know it has to change things have to change eventually Wheel of Fortune. That is so beautiful, guys. This card is so beautiful. Yeah. We got Ten of Coins, King of Coins, and Wheel of Fortune. It's in the fountain. So we have a lot on the line. We have a lot on the line. And I'm not blowing smoke. And I, I be thinking about my reading sometimes. Like, Spirit, don't fucking blow smoke. Like... If something is, like, don't tell me abundance is here and I'm fucking struggling. Like, you know? But the reality is we need to calm down and meditate and contemplate and get ourselves out of the spirit of desperation and into the flow of the universe. The energetic flow of the universe is not desperate. So that's the opposite of the energy that we should be in. We should be in peace, the energy of love, acceptance, and peace, and trust. Full trust in spirit. Mm. We're conflicted. Oh, I love this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're conflicted. I'm, I'm not speaking for you. Some of us may be conflicted because, you know, it's dark. We don't see it all happening right now. We don't because the, the bill collectors are calling or whatever. <laughs> or, you know, our partners aren't reaching out. Or, you know, we're lonely. Or... You know, we're depleted and just feeling like something has to change. Uh, yeah, we have conflicting emotions because the things that are happening for us, we can't see yet. We, we're unable to see it. Um, yeah, we may have insight into the situation, but sight sometimes get in the way of insight because it's what we can touch, see, and feel um, physically. And, you know, we have... Other people who touch, see, and feel calling us and applying pressure on us. And it's like, we have responsibilities. So our responsibilities in life and, and you know, on this lower level needs of that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if we're fighting for that, sometimes it's hard to see things that are happening in the dark and trust that things are happening in the dark because we have responsibilities. And if we ignore those responsibilities, the water gets cut off. The light gets cut off. The rent, you know, shit got to get paid. So it's like things aren't happening. And if things are happening in a timely fashion, that applies more pressure. So that those conflicted emotions sometimes get in the way of insight. And those actions and repercussions sometimes get in the way of insight. But the reality is maybe these things are happening for us in the dark. But we can't see it because of the circumstances. But... With this, we have the Justice and the Four of Cups. You know, it's like saying maybe you feel rejected right now, but you will get justice. Maybe we're feeling rejected and we're feeling, you know, you know, I look at him. He looks good, actually. He has four cups. He has one right there. But it's like, I don't know. But I'm trying to get an emotion from him. He seems kind of happy, though. Or he could be looking down. But either way, we can be feeling some kind of way. Let's just say some kind of way. Feeling some kind of way. Having opportunities, but feeling some kind of way. But spirit is like, we'll get justice. Justice is near. No worries. Just we'll do our homework. We'll meditate and contemplate. Write down the things that we need to meet our physiological needs, our safety needs, our love needs, um, so that we can work on self-actualizing and esteem and, and recognition and getting to the next level and helping others. Because sometimes when we help, help, help others, 
we need pouring into ourselves because we poured our cups into everyone else's cup and now our cups are empty. I need my cup to be poured into. For four years straight, I've given myself. Not only have I been on this journey, but I've helped others around me. I've, I've documented in videos. I've done, I've poured into other people. I've helped other people. I sacrificed my whole fucking job and, and, and reputation in my job, fighting discrimination for other people. It's just so much. It's like I've given all I can give. I have nothing else to give. I, I, listen, this journey took everything from me. So it's like when you've given everything, your cup has to be full, filled back up and more than what you gave because that's what God promised to give more. We, we just, we, to give more, more life than a life that you sacrifice because why would you have to sacrifice your life just to be back at the same life that you were at? No. When you sacrifice your life, and what I mean by sacrifice your life, you seek the guide in you and you go through the pathway to success which requires a lot of obedience dedication perseverance and sacrifice you expect more life which is an abundant life to the next level the life that we were promised when we follow god when we seek god so that's the life we expect we don't expect to be back at the life that we gave otherwise we should never have given it in the first place because what did you gain? So anyway, this is justice, receiving justice. You gave a life, so now you're receiving a life that is far better than what you gave. And I'm gonna leave it at there because, you know, maybe I need to just rest. But thank you guys for watching, liking, subscribing, commenting. Um, every minute counts, every view counts, every like, share counts, every comment counts. I pray over your lives and I pray whatever it is that you need that you reach that personal resolution for you and I. I pray that we reach it soon, like now. I pray that it is resolved right now. I pray to get us into a meditative and contemplative state of mind that resolves this issue now. I wish you love, I wish you likes, and I wish you more light. Let me look up the number 19 because I noticed the number 19. Oh my goodness, guys. Look at that. Can you see that? It says 819. Well, it's 820 now. But when I looked it up and I was like, let me look up the number 19, it was 819. So let me look at the 19 before we go. 19 numerology. Sometimes I look up the gematria. Let me look up Gematria. And sometimes I look up um, numerology. Gematria is Hebrew. Um, it's where they assign numbers to the Hebrew alphabet. And then they find words and phrases from the Bible that equals that. So let me see. OMG, guys. L tell me. This is so perfect. The number 19, according to the Bible World website, the gematria and the word next to the number 19, it says physical manifestation. Haven't we been talking about, like, I, you cannot make this stuff up. Look, I don't know if you guys can see it. Physical manifestation. Like, I'm not making it up. Literally. And Adam called his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my verse shall not pass away. So, it's like believing what we were told. Heaven and earth may pass away, but God's word, God doesn't lie. So it's like believing that we'll receive the life that we were promised. And Eve is about feminine energy. So divine feminine bringing us, becoming one with our feminine energy, bringing us the life that we were promised. Wow. It's a part of the creation hologram. It's a part of life. It's a part of earth. So I think that is it. That is enough. Wow. And I just said it. It says, the, this naturally integrates with the universal concept of Mother Earth and the feminine nature of physical manifestation because it's recept receptive receptivity and passivity. This amplified in the identity.
The number 190 is the 19th tri triangular number, which integrates the word rib with the word value of E. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. Ooh, child, this is so deep. It takes, it will probably take years of study to completely understand all of this. So I don't try to. I just rely on my spiritual knowledge of all-knowing energy. But anyway, the number 19, physical manifestation, it relates to Eve, the divine feminine, becoming one, grounded one, physical manifestation, but also becoming one with our masculine and feminine energies to manifest this life that was promised to us. And then we are reminded that God's word doesn't fail. So we have to trust in God's word. I wish you love, light, and more life. Peace. Visit AshleyGillard.com to order your master manifesto cheat sheet.